Hi class, welcome to lesson two of virtual online learning, which actually equates to lesson 10 in our syllabus. This is going to be on Twitter. So this is normally where I would ask you, hey, who's on Twitter? But I can't see your hands if you raise it. So let's just get started with um, a fun little video. John Hamm is a soft boy with a dad bod. Hashtag truth. <laughs> you, Chris Rock. You are on Grown Ups too. Well, if you lost all your money in divorce, you'd be on Grown Ups too, too. I'd rather plant poison ivy plants in my anus before hearing another word about Kim Kardashian. Go ahead and do that, please. Maisie Williams looks like a very young grandma. <laughs> uh, hashtag David Harbour. Hey, I'm ready to be punched in the face. Bring it, bag. It's nice. I just cut a fart that smells so bad they added David Spade as a supporting character. <laughs> That's not bad. I actually auditioned for that. I didn't know if I got it. Jake Gyllenhaal's smells like hot dog water. It's like a haiku. A be beautiful, beautiful thing to say. I bet Zendaya's feet smell like Funyuns. Let's check, shall we? No? Nope. Smells like success to me. It must suck to be a cute little kid, only to grow up looking like a creep. Yes, Fred Savage, I'm talking about you. That's true. <laughs> Tiffany Haddish has a big-ass mouth. You can't bring ratchet ass bitches like her nowhere. Just shut the up. <laughs> well, you know what? Why don't you shut the up with your 14 followers? But thank you for introducing me to them. You think Martin Short's had sex? I bet Martin Short's never had sex. <laughs> the older Mark Hamill gets, the more he looks like Yoda. Seriously, seen that guy lately? He's Yoda. Mmm, mean burn this is. Thanks a lot. Sarah Paulson, you bitch. I have mixed feelings about you right now. Guess what, mother flick? I have mixed feelings about you, too. <laughs> Kappa Kappa says, Jeff Goldblum is starting to annoy me now. Like, okay, dude, you're quirky. We get it. <laughs> you have some weird sweaters. Good for you. Uh, I... I know what you're talking about. Believe you me, if I was in your shoes, I might feel the same way. Like my new shirt. <laughs> ah, we love mean tweets. Okay, so fun fact, if anyone can guess what this image is of. It's a pretty popular vintage image from Twitter and it's actually called the fail whale. So when Twitter first started, it saw a really quick um, popularity growth. And with that, their system continuously crashed. So in the beginning, when you would use Twitter, you would see what's called the fail whale a lot. And the fail whale would be, okay, sorry, our system crashed and we'll be up in a little bit. So this is a picture of the fail whale. We never see it anymore because Twitter's got their shit together. Uh, a few fun facts about Twitter. Twitter has 330 million monthly active users, and 79% of those are located outside of the United States. Um, Twitter says that 80% of its users are affluent millennials. Users skew more male than female, um, though that's changed recently. It used to be about an even split. 80% of users access Twitter on mobile or through the app. Twitter stopped updating its official tweets per day figure three years ago. The last figure said people send more than 500 million tweets per day. Now they simply say hundreds of millions of tweets are sent per day. And Twitter serves up more than 2 billion search queries per day. It's a lot, a lot of activity. All right, so 
Normally we'd be doing an in-class activity, but we're gonna be doing this virtually this time. So what you will need is a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. So if you don't have that, go and grab it. Pause this video right now and go grab it. And I'm gonna show you one minute of my Twitter news feed. Don't judge me, just watch it, read what you like, Pause it where you think something is interesting, restart it, just note notices what catches your notice what catches your eye. All right, we're gonna time it. Ready? Go. Okay, so now what I want you guys to do is write down all the tweets you remember seeing and who tweeted them. You have one minute, go. Fifteen seconds. Three, two, one. All right, so what did you guys write down? Are there any commonalities between the tweets that you remembered? Were they maybe funny? Did you identify with what was being said? Did they have an image or a video? Were they from a certain person maybe you knew or that you followed? Did you remember as people? Did you remember who tweeted it? Did you remember the people's names? Did you remember the outlet? What you'll find is that most tweets that you remember have struck some sort of emotional chord with you. Maybe they made you laugh, they shocked you, or they surprised you. Um, and what about the people who tweeted them? Most likely you don't remember that. So here's why. The average lifespan of a tweet is only 18 minutes. Every second, on average, around 6,000 tweets are tweeted on Twitter, which corresponds to over 350,000 tweets sent per minute. 500 million tweets per day and around 200 billion tweets per year. The average user only spends one to three minutes per day on Twitter. Less than half of followers log into Twitter daily. So what does this mean for you? That your brand has to be on Twitter more often than any other social media network and your content needs to be compelling. The best practice is posting three to five times or more per day. So 
users that are on Twitter are on there for a very short time, one to three minutes. They are on there, they scroll, they scroll, they scroll. If you don't catch them at the right time with a compelling message, they're either not going to see it or they're not going to remember it. So it's really hard to catch the attention of people on Twitter. Even though Twitter's um, newsfeed has an algorithm that serves you up what it thinks will be the most important to you, it's not chronological necessarily, it's still really hard to get your message in front of people on Twitter because of the fast, rapid-fire nature of it. So when you're creating your plan, your plan for your brand or whoever you're working for, for Twitter, you need to keep this in mind. So let's talk a little bit about the basics of Twitter. I don't know if you guys recognize this picture, but this was a pretty big thing back in 2014. Pharrell wore this hat to the Grammys. Arby's, because they were so on it with their social media account, said, hey, Pharrell, can we have our hat back because it looks like the Arby's hat? And this just sparked a national uh, thing that went viral. They went back and forth with Pharrell and the hat. It put Arby's on the map as having really good, funny social media. And eventually, they ended up actually buying the hat from Pharrell at auction and um, donating all of the money to a charity. So this is a really great example of how Twitter can be really funny from a brand's perspective. All right, so who's on Twitter? Um, as you'll see, 63% of Twitter users are between 35 and 65 years old. Um, as I said before, they used to be split pretty evenly between men and women, but now they're showing a skew towards male. 34% of Twitter users are female. This is statistics from the end of last quarter. 66% of users were male. So it's funny because when Twitter first started, it used to be heavily male. Hardly any women were on Twitter. Then it kind of evened out over the last few years, and even the numbers that I pulled last year for this had it at about 40 to 50%. Um, so it was about an even split. But now, as you can see, it's kind of skewing more male again, which is interesting. There are 24.6 verified journalists on Twitter. So journalists heavily use Twitter. This means you guys as PR people or journalists, really this is where you want to be using it in a professional way. Keep in mind, and we'll talk about this a little more when we get more into content, but being on Twitter and any social media network, you just need to assume your content's gonna be available for everyone. So again, if, do you guys think about um, James Gunn, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, and how he got fired off of those movies by Disney for tweets he did over five years ago? So think about it now. Be really cognizant of what you are putting up on Twitter because it stays there forever. And if you are going to be a professional PR person using Twitter to pitch media and to get a hold of media, then you better make sure your account is pretty clean. Also, 83% of the world's leaders have Twitter accounts. So this is like pretty huge because back not that long ago, um, you had to go through the media gatekeeper to get a message from um, the world's leaders out to the people. Now, for good or for bad, as we see with uh, President Trump, that you can really go directly to the people in any way, shape, or form that you want saying whatever the heck you want. So when are people on Twitter? Uh, if you'll take a look at this graph, you'll see that the best times are Wednesday and Friday at 9 a.m. to tweet. This is global. Again, we talk about looking at your own analytics and making sure that um, you're actually adapting your strategy to your specific analytics. Um, the best days are Wednesday and Friday, and the worst day is Saturday. And where are Twitter users located? So, United States, this is in millions, so leading countries based on number of Twitter users as of January 2020. So, we said that um, the United States, let me see what my figure was now. So, we said 79% of users are located outside of the United States. However, as a whole, the United States has the most users. Everyone else is broken up. Japan has the second most, United Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, and on down. And how are people using Twitter? 80% of users access Twitter on mobile. We talked about that before. I don't think that's any big surprise to anyone. And 90% of the tweets come from 20% of the users. So a large majority of the tweets come from a small minority of tweeters. 
why do people use Twitter? So 71% of Americans on Twitter say they are using it to read news. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper into this in a second. Meanwhile, 42% of Americans on Twitter are using it to discuss politics. Well, as we know, news and politics go pretty much hand in hand. Um, and you'll see from this graph, Twitter has a reputation as the most political of all the social media platforms. It's used heavily by world leaders we talked about. It's used heavily by journalists. And according to Pew Research, 36% of U.S.-based Twitter users are Democrats, and 21% of Twitter users are Republicans. So that's the breakdown. It skews a little bit more liberal than it does conservative. Okay, so let's talk about Twitter as a source for news. Uh, 2017 saw big shifts for Twitter. They were having an identity crisis and their market share of social media was dropping rapidly. They had essentially become the same as all the other social media channels. So you had Facebook where you could um, have a caption and a link and a photo and Twitter used to be the place that was like 140 characters. It was short. It was quick. There was no image options. It was just text. But as they evolved, they started including all these other aspects that every other social media account had. So they really kind of lost why they were unique, and they were seeing people drop off their platform, and the usage was decreasing. Um, so as they did this in 2017, they started their first brand level campaign that they had ever done. Um, and they changed their category in the app store from social networking to news. 74% of Twitter users say they use the network to get their news, an increase of 15% from the year before. Um, and like I said, in 2017, Twitter launched its first brand level campaign. And I'm going to show you one of the videos from that campaign right now. Blessings overplayed. It's amazing. Overproduced. Soulful. You know what's so good? Same drugs. So Twitter became a place where they wanted people to be a part of the conversation and a part of the news. I think that this commercial really demonstrates that with something that's happening that was formerly out of reach, Chance the Rapper was doing a show, never in the past have you been able to talk directly to him and influence what songs he's playing, who's playing with him, what he's doing. So they wanted people to become part of the what's happening out in the world and they wanted to use, have Twitter be a resource for that. So this 2017 campaign involved three different steps. Actually, it involved four different steps, sorry. Um, and the first one was simplifying the product. So making timelines more relevant to the individual. Their timeline, their news feed went from a chronological news feed to an algorithm-based news feed. They gave video priority in the news feed and they started integrating live streaming with partners like Bloomberg, NFL, and they started creating original content. Second, they started fighting fake news. They created better policies to fight the spread of false information. Fact checking, checking, fact checking on Twitter is in the power of the users organically. So much more than any other social media network, Twitter actually has the best way to fight fake news. And that's by the people that are using it, specifically because we have so many journalists that use Twitter and um and notable figures that they can go on and correct. And Twitter is a pretty passionate place that if someone starts to spread false information, um, people shut it down pretty quickly. Uh, number three, 
they had a better segmentation model. So in order to bring new people to Twitter, remember they were losing people at the time, and reach the right potential audience, the brand had been working on a look-alike segmentation model. So a look-alike segmentation segmentation model is where you take your audience, your best users, so like your super fans, right? It's the people that use Twitter the most in the best ways possible, and you dig down on their demographics and their psychographics, and then you match those up to people who aren't using Twitter but have about the same personality type or personality profile. Then you target them with ads and you try and get them to come back on your platform or utilize your product or service. So secondary research on people who are healthy users um, was done by Twitter. They segmented them and then based on their behaviors, interests, mindsets, and attitudes, they targeted them and started to re-attract people back to their platform. Number four was a massive redesign, the biggest in Twitter's history. Um, bold headlines and icon changes appro- improved readability. Uh, retweet and like counters became live in real time, and you started to see less of the little bird. Um, we love the Twitter bird. But if you notice, when you go to make a tweet, it's not the bird anymore. It's actually a quill. Twitter wants to be the place you go to to see what's going on, breaking news, new product announcements, entertainment, things that are happening. They want you to go to Twitter first when anything happens so you can be a part of the conversation. Finally, in 2017, a huge thing happened, and that was that Twitter doubled the character amount. So this was actually pretty controversial when it happened. Um, not a lot of people liked it because they thought the thing of the thing that set Twitter apart was that 140 characters forced you to really um, make sure you were concise, make sure that you didn't go on and on and on. And it was kind of what set it apart. But they found that most people were going over that limit and they wanted to give people a little bit more room. So they doubled the character count and now the character count is 280 characters. <clears throat> All right, some content best practices. Um, for character count, tweets with 100 characters or less have a 17% higher engagement. So that shows you that still on Twitter, people are expecting it to be short, sweet, to the point. Um, if you have a lot to say, you can do a thread, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Include images, GIFs, or videos to get noticed. Use relevant hashtags to help categorize your tweets. And use links. Tweets with links get retweeted 86% more times than those that don't. All right, eight tips for good content. Tweet early and often. Uh, followers don't check Twitter at the same time, and some people might check it in the morning and then not again until later in the evening or even the next day. In order to get as much reach as possible, try tweeting throughout the day instead of trying to get all your tweets out during business hours. Number two, engage more than you broadcast. Somewhere along the line, brands appear to have forgotten that Twitter is a social network, not just a content distribution tool. Ask questions, do Twitter polls, or hop in on public conversations. This is social media, guys. Three, be an industry resource. So instead of automatically tweeting every new post from a blog or your product or your RSS feed, take the time to hand curate the content that you share on Twitter and become a resource for people. Number four, use data to make decisions. For instance, if you look through your analytics and notice that your tweets, including a video, get 15% more engagement than tweets with just a link, take it as a sign that you should start implementing more videos into your Twitter content strategy. Number five, be a part of the community. Too many brands make the mistake of spending little to no time getting to know the Twitter ecosystem. Twitter is a social network that brands can connect to their audiences. A part of that is being a part of the community. And if you are on Twitter and you actively use Twitter, you will notice that Twitter has its own culture. And if you don't understand that culture and how to use it appropriately, um, you very quickly look inauthentic. Number six, know when to take conversations private. One of the most popular uses of Twitter for brands is customer service, and we'll talk a little bit about this in a minute. That makes sense seeing as how social media is consumers' top choice for customer care today. You guys and most, the majority of um, consumers today will go to social media 
to complain or to um, want some customer service before they pick up a phone or email into a company. Twitter is a great place to get the initial contact, but when it's time to dig into the details of what the issue is with the consumer, move the conversation to a more private channel, either DM or start it on an email chain. Uh, seven, respond when people at mention you. So one of the consumer's biggest pet peeves on social media is when brands ignore them. In fact, 15% of consumers will unfollow a brand if they don't receive a reply from them. So make sure when people at mention you, they're talking directly to you. Make sure you respond. And finally, number eight, assume everything you tweet is permanent. We've all heard stories of PR nightmares from brands tweeting inappropriate content or giving rude response to to a customer complaint. One of the easiest ways to avoid these types of situations is to tweet with the assumption that someone is going to see it. And if the tweet is something you don't want to be public or goes against what your brand stands for, don't share it. I have heard the statistic, and I'm not sure if this is totally true, but if you tweet anything and it's on Twitter for more than two minutes, then that it is accessible by any of those like way back machines. So essentially you have, from what I understand, and again, I don't know this for sure, but you have about two minutes to take down a tweet before it becomes a part of your permanent legacy. (laughs) Tweet the right way. Um, First, Twitter is for rapid fire, frequent interaction. This isn't the place where you're going to want to write a dissertation on anything. Um, You guys are going to want to be going back and forth. This is about conversation. It's about quick, um, informative things. We talked about posting multiple times a day, so three to five times plus a day. Also doing retweets. Thank those that share your content. So again, this is social media. If people are engaging with you, if they're sharing your content, Um, Thank them. Tweet your best content multiple times over several weeks. So we kind of talked about the rule, um, the rule of seven, which is now the rule of 12 to 20, uh, that people have to see your content that many times before they'll remember it and take action on it. We know with Twitter that your, um, the lifespan of a tweet is very, very short. So you want to make sure that you're posting your content, your important content, multiple times over several weeks. Now, you don't want to do it in exactly the same way, but you want to keep those key messages the same. You can host a weekly weekly Twitter chat with industry influencers, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. And you can also live tweet events. Those are some great ways to use Twitter from a brand. Also, adding images and videos. This was kind of one of the things that started Twitter's downfall back in like 2016, but now it really is the best way to get eyes on your content in a newsfeed. Tweets with images receive 89% more favorites than those without. And according to Adweek, videos are six times more likely to be retweeted than photos and three times more likely to be retweeted than GIFs. So a video is actually more valuable than a GIF on Twitter. Let's talk about hashtags. Tweets that contain hashtags receive two times more engagement than those that do not, but make sure you're in the hashtag sweet spot. Tweets with more than two hashtags actually receive a drop in engagement by 17%. It's important to use the right kind of hashtags without overusing them. Only include hashtags that add some context to your tweets. So the sweet spot for hashtags is one to two hashtags and making sure that they are relevant to your content. And finally, don't be annoying. So um, this is from a Sprout survey, uh, Sprout social survey that they did. And this lists the most annoying actions that brands take on social media according to the consumer. So the number one thing is posting too many promotions. We talked about this. We talked about the three gives to one get rule. And this really shows that that is very, very true. Using slang or jargon. Again, we talked about using um, a language that is at a fifth grade comprehension level. Uh, for social media, not having any personality on their accounts, or trying to be funny when they're not, it's the worst, uh, or not replying to your someone's message to your consumer or your user or your fan's message. So, Twitter for business. Um, 
there are some companies that have really started to bubble up that have really, really great Twitter accounts, and I would love to hear what some of your favorites are. Um, my favorite is Taco Bell, and we're going to talk about that more in a minute. Um, but let me give you a couple facts on Twitter for business. So Twitter is ideal for small to medium businesses. Uh, the acronym for that is SMB. So you may want to know that for your final. 93% of people who follow small and medium-sized businesses on Twitter plan to purchase from them. And 69% have already purchased from them because of something they saw on the social media network. Twitter is an important platform for customer service. And Twitter users will amplify your message. A third of users who follow an SMB have retweeted a business. 83% of people who tweeted at an SMB got a re and got a response, came away feeling better about that business afterwards. So Twitter is huge for business. Let's look at Taco Bell. So if you guys were lucky enough to be on PRSSA last year, we actually went to the Taco Bell headquarters, which are in Irvine, California. Their PR department is pretty amazing, and one of the reasons is because they are so up-to-date on social media. They actually have what's called the fishbowl there, and it's an office that's all glass and has probably 12 different screens, and they are constantly monitoring social media for what people are saying about them. Um, they monitor it by state, they monitor it by the hashtags, um, anything that's trending across, I think it was three to five different social media networks. But Twitter is definitely the one that they see the most action on. And so this is just one of the examples that they gave us. Um, a couple years ago in 2017, Mark Hoppus, who is in the band Blink-182, tweeted, Taco Bell is better than Del Taco, but Del Taco has french fries, so it's a real Sophie's choice for fast food. Taco Bell saw it, responded, that just might change soon, Mark. And what happened? About a little less than a year later, Taco Bell had fries. So Taco Bell actually watches social media very closely to make product decisions. They also, you may have heard Taco Bell has Taco Bell weddings. And that was something that came from social media as well. They saw that people were actually wanting to get married at Taco Bell or having Taco Bell cater their weddings. And they said, hey, maybe we can provide these people with a spot to get married. And then Taco Bell weddings happen. The same thing with the Taco Bell Hotel. That was a pop-up in Palm Springs a couple years back. All these things started to percolate on social media and then became a reality because Taco Bell watches social media so closely. So maybe you should tweet at Taco Bell sometime too. Um, while we're on the topic of businesses and Twitter for businesses, let's de delve a little bit more into customer service. So according to Sprout Social's 2018 social index, nearly half of all consumers have taken to social media to raise questions and concerns to brands. As a bulk of that back and forth happens in the Twitterverse, Sprout Social data shows that 21% of consumers prefer Twitter to traditional customer service channels. Um, a couple things that you want to remember if you are doing customer service via Twitter is don't ignore negative feedback. Face it head on. I know a lot of times we want to stick our head in the sand and not think about it, but definitely face it head on. Um, the more you ignore it, the worse it gets. Know when to take it private or off platform. Responding publicly to someone who's upset or who has a complaint is great, but once it gets down into the details like we talked about before, take it to the DM or take it to an email. Uh, be mindful of your customer's privacy. There's a lot of privacy laws in place. So make sure that they are not putting their phone number, their email address, things on there, or that you're not putting that stuff on a public account where it can be easily accessed. Um, another great idea is when you're dealing with customer service, um, especially um, someone that is upset, to sign or initial your tweets so you show that they're coming from an actual person and not just a bot. This is really a great way to kind of calm the customer down and be like, hey, I understand. I'm a real person. I'm here for you. Let's talk about this. And finally, prioritize a speedy response. According to Twitter's own data, 60% of users expect a response within an hour of reaching out to a business. And you'll see that graph here. The customer expectation is about um, zero to four hours, but the average brand response time is up to 12 hours. So make sure you're responding and responding quickly. 
Let's talk about a couple things that make Twitter special and make it stand out from the other social media networks. So Twitter has some really cool features. Uh, the first one of those is Twitter Moments. So uh, Twitter Moment is curated tweets about a single topic or story all in one place. So obviously coronavirus right now is happening and um, they have a Twitter Moment every time I open Twitter on the app that moment pops up for me. Um, moments allow publishers and brands to pull together their tweets and tweets from other users about a topic to tell a story in a one story collage. Um, in August 2016, Twitter opened up moments to any user who wanted to create them. So as a brand, you can create a moment. As a person, you can create a moment. Um, some ideas for utilizing Twitter moments, um, aside from breaking news like we're having right now, create a fun roundup. Promote company news, recap an event, tap into conversations happening on Twitter, showcase customer feedback, and resurface your own tweets. So this example here is actually a year in space, which was an award-winning campaign um, done by NASA where they sent an astronaut up into space for one year. I don't know if you guys saw, I tweeted out a New York Times story by this astronaut um, a couple days ago, and he talks about how what he learned from being up in space for 365 days in a small confined space um, and the tips he could give from that experience to people who are now being sequestered in their homes because of coronavirus. Next we have Twitter lists. So not a lot of people use Twitter lists but Twitter lists are a really great resource and tool for PR people and that's why I want to mention them. Uh, a Twitter list is a curated group of Twitter accounts. You can create your own list or subscribe to lists created by others. Viewing a list timeline will show you a stream of tweets from only of the accounts on that list. Each user is allowed to create up to 1,000 Twitter lists. Each can have up to 5,000 users on it. You can choose to make your lists public or private. Some people create public ones to help other folks find interesting people to follow. So the great thing to do as a PR person is you can create media lists on Twitter. And then you can go through and really easily see what those journalists have been writing about so that you can see if whatever you're pitching would match what their beat is and make sure that maybe they didn't write about it already. So Twitter lists are a really good resource for PR people to use in media relations. Twitter threads. So I know you guys are all familiar with these, but I have to include it. Um, Twitter says that when the character limit was 140, 9% of tweets in English hit the limit. Now that tweets can be up to 280 characters, that number has been significantly reduced, but 1% of tweets in English still hit the limit. So one thing that Twitter didn't measure was the use of threading, which seems to be a very popular way now of expressing longer thoughts or keeping updated on a topic. Threads are connected series of tweets telling a longer story. They also take advantage of extra characters, and in many cases, these long-form tweets even announce themselves by starting out with thread or doing a one of two, one of through two of, sorry, that would be one of five, two of five, three of five at the start, so people understand that it's a thread that they can follow. And Twitter chats. A Twitter chat is a public Twitter conversation around a unique hashtag. This hashtag allows you to follow the discussion and participate in it. Twitter chats are usually reoccurring and on specific topics to regularly connect people with these interests. Twitter um, chats are really big in B2B or business to business marketing and public relations. And one Twitter chat that I really recommend is the AP Style Book. They hold a monthly Twitter chat surrounding a specific topic, as you'll see on the screen. This is the one around coronavirus. And people can hop on and start asking, okay, uh, what are we supposed to call this? How are we supposed to spell it? Where do the hyphens go? Is it COVID-19 lowercase? Is it COVID-19 uppercase? So Twitter chats are really great when it comes to specific information, having conversations with your consumers, as well as um, really becoming an, an authority figure that people look to on Twitter. All right, so advertising. Advertising on Twitter is really gaining some traction. Uh, this is a great place to look into advertising, I think maybe even more so than Facebook at this time. People are 26% more likely to view ads on Twitter than on any other leading social media platform. 
Twitter ad prices are also decreasing, so cost per engagement declined by 54% year over year. And according to the company's quarterly report, Twitter ad prices keep getting more affordable. But engagement is increasing. The company's own numbers show that overall engagements with ads increased 99%, um, driven by a continuing mixed shift towards video ad impressions, as well as a higher click-through rate across all ad formats on a like-for-like -like basis. A quarter of the U.S. marketers uh, run video ads on Twitter. Most Twitter users don't perceive, perceive video ads as intrusive. So a recent survey found 67% of Twitter users said Twitter promoted videos in the first view position were not intrusive. When video ads appeared further down in the timeline, 73% of users found them to not be intrusive as well. In fact, most Twitter users actually found the video ads to be informative. So they also um, embed much easier and more seamlessly than some of the other social media networks. Videos get more retweets, so definitely be looking into that. And promoted accounts help Twitter users connect with new brands. 68% have followed a small to medium business after seeing their promoted account on Twitter. I will say that back when I was working in skincare, one of the only ways that we could grow our um, Twitter following once we hit a plateau was by doing a promoted count and we would see exponential growth very, very quickly. All right. We're coming to the end, guys. Um, analytics. So Twitter has in app analytics, which are really good. I quite enjoy them because they're very simple to look at and they give you really just the top line information that you need. If you want more in-depth information um, and analytics for Twitter, then I would highly recommend looking into some third-party apps. Um, again, there's usually a cost with those. Um, but to use Twitter effectively, you guys know you have to be familiar with your specific metrics. So Twitter's analytics dashboard is available to all users on the desktop. It shows impressions, retweets, engagement, and other important statistics. You can learn more about your key demographics of your followers, understand how to create better interactions with them, determine when you should tweet to increase engagement, and discover what kind of content works best best for your audience. So Twitter's in-app analytics are on a 28-day rolling summary, which means that it will take 28 the past 28 days. So the key to remember is if you're pulling analytics once a month for, say, a client, that you're making sure that you're pulling them on the same day every month. So you're getting an apples to apples comparison with the numbers that you're receiving. So again, it's not Twitter's analytics aren't like pulling from June 1st to June 30th. They're pulling the past 28 days. So and then that will keep changing as you move forward, if that makes sense. And that's it for Twitter. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you found it informative. Twitter has become one of my favorite places to be. So if you're on Twitter, uh, definitely give me a follow at, at Mrs. Underscore Newton and follow the JPR department at CSULBJPR. I will see you guys next time for our class on LinkedIn.